Hi, this is Nick from The Run Testers, and this is our early review of the Brooks Hyperion Elite 2. So the Hyperion Elite 2 is obviously the successor to the Hyperion Elite 1, which came out early this year. It's a very quick update. Uh, we'll have a full review coming in, in a couple of weeks. Kieran's also got the shoe, so we'll be doing a multi-tester review at that stage. But for now, this is just my early impressions after the first few runs in the shoe. So to start the key stats of the shoe, uh, the weight of it has increased. It's now 223 grams. That's in my UK size 9. Uh, that's 7.9 ounces. The Hyperion Elite 1 in my size came in at 205 grams, 7.2 ounces. So it's a, a bit, it's an increase in weight due to the change in the midsole foam and also they've added a bit more foam and the stack at the front is a little bit higher, but the, um, the stack in general is a little bit higher, but the overall drop is still eight millimeters from heel to toe. The price is gonna be 210 pounds in the UK and $250 in the US, which is the same price as the Hyperion Elite 1. It's launching on the 1st of September. Start with the upper of the shoe, which is pretty much the same as on the Hyperion Elite 1. It's a very, very lightweight, slightly mesh upper. It's um, paper thin, there's really not much to it at all, um, but it's got a pretty roomy toe box, I will say, and there's a little bit of padding around the collar here, which actually did irritate my Achilles when I ran in the shoe three days in a row. Um, I'll be looking out for that in long runs uh, to come and see if it you know, is the problem at all on the shoe. We'll give some more info and fit in our full review when Kieran's also tried it out. But yeah, for me, these were true to size. Um, I also had a chance to try a size 10 because I got the wrong shoe for a bit and that was noticeably too big. So yeah, I went true to size in these. The midsole is really where the big change to shoe is and it's a very, very welcome change. Um, the first Hyperion Elite used a DNA Zero foam, which was really lightweight, but just firm and not very comfortable, especially with a carbon plate in there. At the same time, Brooks released the Hyperion Tempo shoe, which had this DNA Flash uh, nitrogen infused EVA midsole foam. It was also on the Brooks Catamount Trail shoe. Both of those shoes are brilliant, really enjoyed running in them, and I was very pleased to see that Brooks brought that DNA Flash foam to the Hyperion Elite 2. It's a really, really good foam. It's very, very fast. It's still really lightweight, as you can tell by the weight of the shoe, and it's more comfortable than DNA Zero. In the middle of the shoe, uh, there's obviously the carbon plate, but they've also put in uh, some rapid roll technology. I'm guessing this is probably designed to be similar to Saucony Speed Roll, but I didn't really get the same kind of rolling sensations I did from the Endorphin Pro. But yeah, there's a very quick transition on the shoe, and that might be partly down to this new rapid roll tech. On the outsole of the shoe, you have, or, you know, it's a real racing a racing shoe. There's hardly anything on here in terms of outsole rubber. Um, it's um, got, it gripped well enough for me on the road. On a wet day, there was a little bit of slippage, nothing too bad. I wouldn't like worry about it. But yeah, there's not a lot there. If you go off road in this, it's going to you know wear down pretty quick. Overall, though, in terms of durability, Brooks suggests 200 miles for this shoe, um, which after they were widely derided for kind of saying 50 to 100 miles for the first Hyperion Elite. I wouldn't be surprised if this lasted a lot longer than 200 miles, frankly. I think I've put about that on the Hyperion Tempo, and there's no real sign of wear and tear. Obviously, this is a kind of more performance-focused shoe than that, but similar foam, I don't expect to see a huge amount of breakdown in it, so I wouldn't be surprised if this lasted, you know, 400 miles easily kind of thing. But, you know, that's obviously guesswork at this stage. So it's the early review of the shoe. So I've only run it three times so far, but I've done a lot of good hard running in it. Um, the first run I did was a track session doing four sets of, uh, uh, four reps of 2K at kind of different paces. A couple were at three, uh, 320 per K pace. Uh, there was one that was alternating 75, 85, 400 meters. And the last one was like a progression one, which um, you know finished off pretty fast. Like the final lap was coming in under 70 seconds of the 2K. And um, I think at all those paces, I was really impressed with this shoe, actually. Even at the end, you know, running under five minute per mile pace for a couple of laps. And, you know, it still felt fast and quick. It didn't feel too cumbersome, despite, you know, the kind of fairly hefty stack of cushioning. I definitely felt like I was finishing the session, the session strong. The cushioning is protective. It is fast. It's not like the Hyperion Elite one, where I did feel my legs were getting beaten up by running fast in that shoe. Uh, this does feel have that kind of properties of these super shoes, where all that foam protects your legs whilst also still enabling you to run fast thanks to the carbon plate. Uh, the second run I did was a kind of easy to steady hour, kind of same feel like I wasn't, didn't feel uh, bad at easy paces but it's noticeable once you started, once I started to pick up the pace towards the end of the run that the kind of the more you put into this phone the more you get out of it. it's kind of responsive, it is fast, it's not really soft and springy like a Vaporfly style shoe but 
yeah, it's definitely a quick shoe. And again, just finished that run feeling strong, comfortable, and really, really starting to fall in love with the shoe. Uh, and then the third one I did was a hard 10K, uh, which we'll cut to now. So this morning I'm heading to do a hard 10K. I'm gonna be running alternate Ks at 3.50 pace and 3.20 pace. Uh, so 3.20 is around my 10K uh, pace when I'm on form. It's very windy today and wet, so I'm not sure how it's gonna feel. And then the 3.50s are kind of float recoveries. Doing this to test out the Brooks Hyperion Elite 2. So pretty excited to see how they do today. So I'm not going to hold it against them if I have a terrible run because it is breezy. It's very cold. It's a real, uh, it's a real English summer's day, basically. That's all done. Uh, on pace, a little bit quicker actually, kind of GPS foibles at the start of the run, but after that, just, uh, everything was everything went pretty well, in pretty good shape, and yeah, big fan of the Hyperion Elite. I uh, felt the same in my track and my easy one the other day. Do feel strong at the end of hard runs in these. Um, do think they provide that kind of protection that you get in other kind of big high stack carbon punch shoes, probably very light, not soft really at all, like um, the Vaporfly, something like that, they're firm, but they're Sponsored, very quick heel to toe. Yeah, I like them a lot. <laughs> That's three runs in and I've enjoyed every single one very much. So definitely a shoe that I think make running hard feel that little bit easier. So far, I am incredibly impressed with the Brooks Hyperion Elite 2. It's kind of what I, basically, as soon as you run in the Hyperion Tempo and you run in the Hyperion Elite 1, you could see there was a great shoe in there. They just moved the foam from the time of training shoe into the racing shoe. That's what Brooks have done. To their credit, they very quickly kind of updated that first shoe, which wasn't particularly impressive, and have brought out a real winner here, in my opinion. Um, it's like I say, every run I've done with it, I felt very comfortable, fast in it, and I do think it will protect your legs over the course of a marathon. I do think it's quite stable as well. It's got a really wide kind of forefoot there. I think it's more stable than something like the Vaporfly. Um, whether it's as quick, it's still kind of hard to say. Like, uh, I think it's in the top tier of carbon plate shoes is my early verdict on this. It's up there with the Endorphin Pro and the Nikes as the kind of the best kind of maximally cushioned shoes out there. Um, Dorfer Pro is a bit cheaper, it's got that rolling sensation, it's really, really impressive shoe. This is actually lighter than both that and the Alpha Fly, but heavier than the Vapor Fly. So yeah, we'll come in with our full verdict on you know where we think it sits in the kind of rankings of carbon shoes when we do the full review, but I do think it's right up there. You're not gonna be disappointed if you buy this shoe, even at 210 pounds. It's a more traditional feeling shoe than something like the Nikes, which are obviously very soft. That Zoom X foam is very soft and you know kind of bouncy. And the, even the Saucony kind of rolls on the foot. You do kind of notice it in a good way. You don't really notice this shoe in a way. It kind of just disappears in the foot as light and fast. But, you know, given the massive stack of cushioning, it doesn't feel at all like you've got this huge stack in a way. It feels much more traditional, just very fast to me. And yeah, so far I've loved running it. I can't wait to log a hard long run in it. And we'll give you more thoughts on all of those kind of things when we do our full review. And we'll also have Kieran's take on the Hyperion Elite too. That's it guys, that's our kind of early early take on the Hyperion Elite 2. Please do like and subscribe and ring the little bell so you get notified when our you know our next video launches. One of the videos we have coming up is obviously the full review and we'll also have like a big breakdown of kind of the carbon plate shoes that are out there at the moment coming as well. So yeah, like, subscribe and we'll see you next time.